this campus building, you can go take a look at it, actually has some rooms defined in there. Okay, and how do we define the rooms? We went through and we just dropped room objects. Let me even take out a room and kind of show you what, how we do it again. I'll take out a room, take out a room. Okay, and when I'm in phase one right now, it says I create these rooms, they're gonna be phase one rooms. I take a room object and I drop it in and I drop it in, okay, and I've created some new rooms. Okay, notice these rooms aren't set up the same as the other rooms. They aren't set up as colors, designations, okay, they're kind of just sort of generic rooms right now. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start playing around with that a little bit. This issue of the color of the rooms and how they're displaying is actually controlled by something called a room legend. Okay, and you can use colors to fill out your schedules and really differentiate between different categories of information. In this case, the rooms are being uh, colored by the type of function in each of the different rooms, so office versus hallway versus bathroom, something like that. So if you would like to, for a room, go through and change that, you can go ahead and let me grab the room object. There it is. It has properties, like most other things do. Okay, notice it has a phase, on only one phase. It doesn't have a created and demolished. But it has this whole notion of an occupancy. Let's take a look at that. And I can choose whether I want it to be a hall, an office, a conference room, whatever it wants. In fact, I can choose something like office. And if I choose office, it'll show up in blue. If I choose this one, and I want to add my own designation to it, oh, instead of being one of these existing designations, I can say that whatever I'd like that to be is a conference room instead. Kay. And when I do that, it'll in turn get a different color. Okay. Nope. Yeah, it actually added in there. Okay. So we have these different colors and this legend, which is sort of based on some criteria about the room. All these rooms have properties, and you can sort of use the coloring just to sort of give us a really quick indication of where the rooms fall relative to those properties. Okay, now, these room legends are actually kind of really cool in terms of what they can show. Let me just kind of take a look at that. This is one that's for color scheme one. Let me edit the scheme and sort of take a look at what's available in here. We have a couple of schemes that are set up in here right now. We have one scheme which will sort of show different colors based on the name of the room. We'll have another scheme which will show different colors based on the occupancy value. Okay, we can choose whatever we want. We have another one over here that could be based on department. Okay, right now all the rooms have the same department. Okay, but let me go ahead and change to that. And show that if I wanted to, for example, start differentiating the rooms that way, I could say that, okay, over here, let's say this one belongs to department CEE. Okay, this one over here Oh, let's go ahead and make it belong to the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Okay, and as I go through and change all the different designations, okay, over here, you're gonna be a CEE room. You'll be an ME room over here. Okay, so you can use really whatever properties it is that you would like to display. Choosing from the list or creating your own. Okay, and then within these different schemes, let me choose that again. You could also choose to edit the colors that are used. So right now, CEE, it's been filled in with a value. I can go ahead and make those red. I can make those kind of yellow, whatever it is that's gonna make the most sense in terms of displaying those things. So room legends is just sort of, and categorizing of rooms based on these different properties, it is sort of a really nice way of presenting the information so that as especially as you're looking at a building which is not just a few bedrooms in a house, but it's actually a big department or a building that is allocated between different departments, it gives you sort of an indication of really how it's all split up. Yeah. How do you add a legend to a feature that doesn't have one yet? Ah, no worries. What you do is, for example, let's go over to, oh, my like my phase two or something like that. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Where do I want to go? Well, sure. Nah, I'm going to go over here. If you want to add a legend, it's not actually a great one to do it to. Hang on. I'll switch this over. I'll do another one. Rename it as just phase two construction. Phase two, level one, proposed. I should use a, a better naming scheme. My naming scheme's all intermixed right now, so you know, don't do as I do. <laughs> do as I say in this case. Okay, so let's take a look at the properties. I'll switch that over to phase two, and I'll show the proposed. Okay, there we go. So now we have one that doesn't have a color legend to it. What you do is, it's up here under room and area. It's right here, legend. And when you go dragging it on in, got to click in it, hang on. There it is. Bring it on in. Okay. In terms right now, it says no colors defined. It's really because no rooms have been defined in this phase. If I start allocating rooms, okay, and then I give those rooms some properties. Like again, this one's going to be a uh, property of the CEE department. Okay, then I can go through and I can edit the scheme. And again, oh, by department, there it is. I'll choose that scheme and I'll start getting the reds versus the yellows and stuff like that. Okay, now this whole thing about sort of scheduling the rooms, going through and showing them this way is really cool. We can also do this tabularly, and that's actually kind of the next big thing we want to show you in general, is that you can create schedules of all these different rooms. And when we go through and we try to plan out something like this multi-phased oh, rooms in these different buildings, and which department's going to get which rooms, and do we have enough space for each of the different departments that's going to meet their budgets for lab space versus classroom and stuff like that. Okay, we'll use floor plans like this. We'll use rooms to allocate the spaces. Okay, basically dividing these up so we could, for each of these different things, decide whether we want to show it by department, decide whether we'd rather have it shown by the occupancy or the use of the room, really whatever it is that we want to show. Okay, and again now all of a sudden, all three of these, this one, this one, and this one, I can make offices or classrooms or whatever it is. I'm going to say all those are actually going to be classrooms. I'll give it a new use. Okay, that'll show up in the legend. Okay, we can also schedule these things, and that's kind of the completion of the story. If I go through and I say view, create a new schedule, what I'm going to do is go through and create a room schedule. And I'll say, but room schedule by department, or room schedule by use. Let me do it by use. I can say, choose which phase it is. Again, since it's a room, we have to choose which phase we're talking about. Say OK, we'll add the properties in. I'm going to go ahead and give what level the room's on, what the name of the room is, what the number of the room is, what the occupancy is. And if I go through and do something like this, with a little bit of sorting and grouping, maybe I can sort this out by um, occupancy. I'll put a footer on each of those, and I'll put a grand total on that. And then I can say, let's sum up those areas. Okay. All of a sudden now, I have something which is saying, OK, the classroom spaces versus, oh, I'll just call these offices. We start having a summary of the classroom spaces versus the offices. We could subtotal that by department. We can start having a space inventory that's going to be used for doing our master planning of the space. Now, one of the nice things about schedules we haven't played around with too much, but it's actually available is right here. These schedules are really bi-directional in terms of how the information is flowing. I chose to make those room offices in the schedule just by filling it in the tabular form, which was really a lot easier than doing it the other way. So now if I come back over here to the fit proposed plan, you'll see okay, that the offices got filled in too. Okay, so 
If I go through and change something in the tabular form, which is often easier, it'll change it in the colored fill form too. Okay, and you can go ahead and just use that, you know, whatever's gonna be the easiest way for you. But I'll leave it up there for today in terms of what we wanna do. This will continue with this whole notion that, okay, we put things into phases, and then once we have things into phases, we often start with sort of programmatic needs and budgets for each of the different things. I want so much lab versus so much classroom. I want so much in this department versus that department. Okay, and that we can really use these types of plans to do that budgeting and allocate the entire space before we actually put in all the physical walls. We could do it this way, we, or the rooms are already divided, but we could even set up things as areas where we do this sort of planning even before we go through and put on the walls and to sort of separate all the different spaces. Okay, let it go through and take care of all that. The nice part is, you know, as we go through and do the space planning, if we take out that wall, there's two rooms on top of each other right now, and I take out one of those rooms, my budgets, my inventories, my schedules are all being updated automatically. So even as I go through and make a change as simple as just moving that wall around, okay, which wasn't a very good wall to move. Ah, as the wall goes crashing out of the building. Um, the budgets, the inventories, the schedules are all being updated. Okay, so. That's the, mm, this is starting to give us some flexibility as opposed to having to maintain a whole bunch of separate spreadsheets to actually let it do the calculations and the summing up, summing up for us. Great, let's quit there for today. When you come on back on Tuesday, we will go ahead and look at assignment four, which is gonna be something sort of similar to what we've been doing with here. We're gonna start with sort of an existing classroom building and you're gonna go ahead and put some other buildings around the quad to kind of complete it and work together with someone else to design some buildings to meet some different budgets Okay, and sort of phase things out so you can give us views that are appropriate for each of the different phases and even kind of think about some different design options so that rather than just sort of proposing a single design, we could actually say, well, what if we do the auditorium as version A versus version B? Okay, and use the model to go ahead and manage that. So it's all about, for these bigger projects, how you can layer in all this design decision complexity but still keep it managed in your model. Okay, beautiful. Why don't we adjourn for today and have a great weekend?